thank you very much for giving me this opportunity, especially me, to share my experience of being a victim, a survivor, and a conqueror. Excuse me? But I think I'm changing it as a conqueror. Now I'm going to share with you some ingredients as to what made me who I am, what I did to be where I am today. The first one is called knowing yourself. Does anyone really know about themselves? Are you a stranger to yourself? Have you ever ask yourself that question? Who am I? That is a major point sometimes we forget. We know all about others. So I'm sure the majority of us know about, more about celebrities than about ourselves. <laughs> Where they were born, how many films they were made, and how many awards they won. And even if they had a facelift, a boob job, or a lip doctor. Don't you all agree all those things? <laughs> Knowing yourself is about believing in yourself with self-awareness and self-knowledge. Knowing your habits, values, and attitudes, and how you respond to various situations in your life, and what makes you tick. Once you simmer yourself with these ingredients, they will definitely boost your self-confidence, <coughs> self-esteem, and self-worth. Loving yourself. Is it selfish or egotistical to love yourself? I would like to share with you a letter a very special friend wrote to me. Dear Margaret, you are unique and I love spending time with you. You never give up and your posit positive attitude, clarity and spiritual energy towards life is so rewarding and uplifting. My love for you continues to grow, and I am so proud to be your friend. <coughs> Guess who wrote that? I wrote it to myself. <laughs>
is, uh, my voice is quite strong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I wrote first, first of all, yeah, I wrote this poem because I think it really represents all of us here today. It's called The Awakening of a Woman. And you know, as I was about to write this poem, an astounding question surged into my mind. The definition of a woman. I have been a woman for over 50 years and have never thought of the definition of a woman. Have you? <coughs> I hastily Googled it and I was aghast to find out the definition and stigma of a woman in this modern world today. I suggest you do the same as I'm not going to divulge it to you. <laughs> okay, here is my definition of a woman. I should call it a woman of a woman. A woman is defined by her depth of integrity, her shared sense of responsibility, her desire of new discovery, and her courageous ability for flexibility to discover her capabilities. A woman is strong, emotionally and mentally, and can refine herself, reinvent herself to rediscover her authentic self and um, identity. A woman is a beautiful rose, always growing and flowing. With the labor of love, compassion, honesty, tolerance, understanding in every fiber of her being. A woman has a divine purpose in this world and is there to play an active, critical role to free herself from the bondage of being abused, confused, and misused in all shapes and forms. A woman's heart. A woman and her loving embrace of change, along with her ever ready determination to stand for what she believes in and her refusal to fall for the stigma this world has thrust upon her. Why is it shaking, I wonder? A woman is blessed with unique, multiple skill talents to go out and share with others what she has learned, achieved, despite all challenges, pain, struggle she has encountered. A woman is not just a mother to her children, she's a mother to the world. Now, more than ever before, many <coughs> women from all walks of life are collectively awakening and emerging from caterpillars to vibrant butterflies, radiating their <coughs> true colors and the true colors which I had a stand, sorry. Their real desires, their true hope, dreams and triumphs, actions and solutions. How do you think the world would be tomorrow if women collectively spread their wings, tread with inner multitask strength, courage, wisdom, and leadership to co-create and transform this world from revolution into evolution? For our children and grandchildren. That's the end, and thank you very much. <laughs>
sort of always say about advocacy. It's more sort of mild and more, yeah, more, more convenient. Uh, and so advocacy is about influencing, yes. <laughs> and first of all, it does not to be confrontation. This is the main issue. You build that partnership with the person who is making decisions because it's a great support for you when you you are in a good term. Must be clear what you are trying to influence and what policy you wish to change. Keep in mind that policy makers are always a human being. It's a man or woman. It's not the institution itself. And so you can just uh, reach him how you reach your neighbor, for example. But the main issue you need to know what topic would be very much important for you. This person could be as a human being, he could be uh, interested in his own promotion, for example. Yeah? And uh, it's his agenda. But your, your, your agenda is to change the situation. So you can change your situation uh, and, in, and put this in, in service, uh, your, this change in situation, your agenda. And this is sort of um, uh, oh yeah, it's influencing issue. Advocacy is used to influence uh, the choices and action of those who make laws and regulation and those who distribute resources and make other decisions that affect the well being of many people. Instance, the dignity campaign. That is a campaign of advocacy, actually. So maybe we use a different term, but somehow advocacy is a good word for us to start thinking about and thinking of ourselves as advocates and not just <coughs> influencers. There's something more professional and more formal about it. And I think we are all doing this, actually, in our countries when we're talking about family, when we're try trying to bring family in as a some kind of agent of change, or this is all advocacy. And uh, based on my experience, when we're starting to work with the country, we always try to find the right angels. For example, now in, um, I just recently came from New Zealand. We have some uh, initiative there, it calls Women So Women. Of course, we target in our group of population, we have my group of population, yeah. women who use drugs, who are vulnerable to HIV, and other infectious diseases, who are not covered by social and health and care practices, who are neglected from the society. And which has chosen these NGOs who are already in good terms with the municipal level. This is really important for you then to, to support something that is already sustained at the local level. Why it is like that? Because, uh, as I mentioned yesterday, you end cannot change the government. And you end cannot stay in the country for a long time. So all your interventions is just to provide support to change something. But we can't do it by ourselves. We always use the local capacity. And that is why when uh, when we came to Ukraine, so the the first our first conditions, donors have always some certain conditions. The first condition was very good, very good cooperation with the local municipal. We chosen has has chosen six NGOs, and we provided grants to them. First of all, we focus collaborate. Uh, strong, uh, just uh, enforce the collaboration with the uh, municipal level and civil society level. We invited them to go to just to Vienna. We showed the Vienna experience. How Vienna, uh, at the municipal level, they managed to provide this service. They were impressed. We provided grant to them. We uh, asked them to develop their uh, uh, proposals. And now, recently, I went there. With my monitor visit, and I noticed that uh, among these six NGOs, only two were successful. Why? Because these two were in close cooperation with the municipal level. 
and they sort of still uh, use all these services. They are, uh, I mean, all funds they use only to sustain their facilities and uh, to um, enforce the collaboration with the municipal services, like if they went to the uh, clinical, uh, uh, to the clinics to find the doctors there which support these activities. And these doctors, they don't need additional, for example, additional uh, fees for their services because they are already funded by the, by the budget, by the local budget. And also at the local budget, at the municipal level, they always have their own funds for social activities, social activities or medical activities. For example, to, uh, to support people, for example. But our particular people are homeless. That is why we use their funds for, 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 for our work. So when we're starting this advocacy, we have to um, look at different activities. Because advocacy means um, to change the situation, to change the policy. And we have um, other activities which usually mix up with the uh, advocacy, but in fact it is not uh, like advocacy activities. It's different activities. But all of these steps you have to fulfill be before you do an advocacy. So first of all, it's of course information education communication campaign, which has to change awareness and behavior of people. Uh, the target group here is group, uh, people at the local level and certain age group. And is existing. For example, uh, to do drug policy issues or drug, uh, yeah, drug policy issues, we have three conventions to deal with these. Uh, to do HIV, we have a resolution on HIV and actually uh, the country could uh, uh, also, you have to do risk assessment in terms of uh, if uh, what is the risk that situation can change. Uh, for example, the person who uh, you are relying on to change the disposition. What would be the next step in this? Or how the situation will be uh, sustained with this? There's the capacity to work with the young people in advocacy. This is the crucial point also because uh, when you um, involve more young people, uh, it means that uh, young people, they are more active, they are more sort of uh, uh, creative. And sometimes this is a problem from different sides as a uh, young adult. Yeah. Have capacity and skills for advocacy, so it's the same. You, you have to be uh, good in your in your in your area. And interlocutor coordination and leadership that is very important to work on one goals to understand the uh, the final goal to understand the activity uh, what you are going to implement. Have strong ongoing partnership that can form a broad base for advocacy and have sufficient resources for advocacy. That actually. Uh, of this presentation. But I was relying on your question. I thought probably you had uh, some question related what is the process, how it's supposed to be, uh, how it can be done uh, with uh, um, such organizations like you and OBC. For example, if we uh, uh, NGOs want to apply for funding from the does the UN have like funding for an NGO organization if we had a project dealing with HIV country? Would there be possibilities to get funding for that? Actually, I a bit uh, answered this question yesterday. Uh, UN always working as a government of us. Yeah. They're always providing a technical agency to provide technical support to the government. But when we start in our activities, we have to consider the uh, participation of all levels of the society. And as I mentioned already, we are very much relying on the uh, 
with the expertise because they have ability to um, for flexibility, so they have uh, they uh, are more flexible. They could adapt to the current situation or to the changing situation. They could see the needs of the target group, and they could have access to the target group. And uh, the state uh, is interested in that. And in fact, uh, we have more presentation, and I'm really sorry that I didn't throw the uh, meet your expectation with this, because um, and uh, yeah, as uh, I wanted just to to end this with uh, to say that Albert Einstein he said that the most uh, uh, sort of serious problem cannot be solved with the same level of thinking that creates this problem. It is why women, they are talented enough, they are very much powerful, they are very much sort of gifted, and you have to just give your creativity.